What is going on fellow game developers? My name is Muddy Wolf and today we are going to be getting set up with a VR project. So what we're going to do in this series is just build simple VR stuff. I'm going to show you a bunch of different VR things and in this video specifically we are going to just get ready so you can go into VR, look around and also move your hands around. So let's go in. So I'm just going to mention I am using the Quest 2. I'm going to be using an air link to this. Um, and obviously I will also be using the quest controllers um, and yeah so that's essentially it so let's start a new project uh, let's just go in here go to game development let me create a, a new folder I'm going to call this tutorials and I'm going to create a new folder in here called um, XR or Godot XR tutorial select that folder and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to select the compatibility now you can use any of these other ones when you're working uh with vr or xr however if you want to support the quest 2 natively um as well as um any native uh vr experiences even web xr um you're going to want to use compatibility now if you're only building for um pc vr you can use forward plus or mobile i recommend um using them if you want to make your game look really good obviously it's going to depend on how powerful the pc is um but let's just select compatibility for this tutorial i'm going to choose no git uh, and then i'm just going to create an edit so now the project is open the first thing we're going to do is create a new 3d scene and i'm just going to call this main uh, or just main so this will be our main scene and we can just save this to our directory right click it and say it as our main scene so this will be the scene that loads when we first get started now the next thing i want to do is go into our project and project setting so for vr on godot or xr in godot you want to go down to the xr tab here select open xr and make sure you turn this on you will need to save a restart but we'll come back to that in a second because there's more configuration we need to do first so the next thing i'm going to do is go over to shaders and just click enable this will obviously enable our shaders um, as well uh, you need this because there's some xr required shaders or as you can see there there's some godot, godot will compile shaders required for xr essentially you need this on as well to get it to work next thing is we can hit save and restart and now we'll obviously add that well set that all up now that's all loaded we actually have to add a script to our main but before we do that i'm going to import the xr tools which are part of the um, xr package so if you go for to asset you want to select xr tools and you can see here by Mux213, his name is Bastian Olidge. I apologize if I got your name wrong there. Uh, he has some great tutorials on this on his channel, and I'll link that down below. Uh, but here you can see Godot XR tools for Godot. He's the one who actually um, basically contributes to all the XR stuff inside of Godot. So what we'll do is select this, click download. That will in download it. And then we can add in all of this. Now, these are just a bunch of helper functions, a bunch of helper setup for XR, which makes it easy. You don't have to do it all by yourself. Um, and honestly, it's well worth using. It's, there's no point of reinventing the wheel. So let's just install this package, the XR tools. And there we go. This should import them all. We may have to restart here. Uh, we'll just see. Okay, no, I didn't have to restart. It all just come around and works. You can see we have this add-ons folder with the Godot XR tools. And there's a lot of things in here we'll probably be using. The next thing I like to do inside of our uh, main thing is actually set up a floor or something you can kind of see. So I'm just going to get a static body. To be fair, it doesn't even need to be a static body just yet, but we're going to use static body just because we will be adding a character body to our player, which will allow him to fall, and obviously he'll need to stand on. So we're going to add a static body. I'm then going to add a collision shape 3D, and inside of here we're going to have a mesh instance 3D as well. So on the collision shape, let's just set a box shape for this, and I'm going to set it to about 0 0.1 in its height, uh, about 5 on the x and the five on the y there you go that's a nice platform and then we can do the same with our mesh here get a box mesh um sell it to 0 0.1 set its size to five and five and there you go that's just a simple thing so we can see how we're moving in the world now i am just going to select it and move it down on its transform by minus 0 0.25 nope 0. Point 0 0.05 is right to get it to be just underneath the floor essentially you don't have to do that it will work regardless i just like to do it because i like to have 
my floor as at the where you stand at zero zero i think it looks nicer and then once we have this set up we can actually add in our xr origin which will be how we or the device or the character essentially who you are controlling through your headset but before I do that, what I want to do is actually want to create a new scene of other node and we are going to search for the XR Origin 3D. Now, once we have that, we also need an XR camera. So inside of here, we're going to add in an XR camera 3D here underneath this, which will allow us to obviously see. So you can see uh, our forward position here and where we're going to be actually looking from. Now, just to add to this, we need a left hand and a right hand. So we want an XR controller 3D. I'm going to duplicate that and then rename one to left hand and the other to right hand. Now, by default, these aren't set to track anything, so they won't do anything. On the right here, you need to set what they're following. Now we're going to have the left hand follow the left the XR left hand, which will be any left hand controller because we're using OpenXR, which will automatically map whatever device you're using. So this will work for things like the valve index and stuff like that as well. Now on the right hand, we're going to select the right hand, obviously there, and there we go. And that will get us a new XR Origin 3D. I'm just going to call this the XR Origin and save that into our folder. Normally I would create a folder for all of this to keep it all our scenes in place. Uh, but for this tutorial, we don't need that. We're not gonna be doing too much complexity yet. We may tidy up in the future. Now, once we've done that, we can go to our main and drag in our XR origin just straight in there. And there you go. You can see this is just sat there doing nothing. However, the issue with this is it still won't work because we need to encode to tell uh, GD script or C sharp, you can use E4, and I will leave a link down below where you can follow a guide to help you get this set up if you're using C sharp. However, um, if we're going to use GD, we need a script on the main root element to tell it to basically prepare our scene for VR or XR. So, what we're going to do is go create a new script, we're just going to call it main and save, and let's just delete all of this. We need to use an XR interface. Oh, we're going to call it XR interface, sorry, and we need to uh, use the class XR interface. We will then create the ready function. And inside of here, we're going to set the XR interface equal to XR server. And now we're going to find the interface and we can search for different ones in here. But the one we're going to be using is open XR. Once we have that, we just want to check if our XR interface uh, and our XR interface dot is initialized. This just checks if this is true. So this isn't equal to null. So we found something and is actually initialized. So there were no errors doing that. We can actually just print. You don't need to print, but I'll just say open XR. Oh, that's OPEX. Open XR initialized successfully and now just let us know in the console that it's all connected as well then what we need to do is turn off vsync because vsync shouldn't be it shouldn't work with xr because you you'll get some weird artifacts and it just won't it doesn't work very well let me just close this because it is so next we need to actually use the display surfer and we just want to go window set vsync mode and we are going to say display surfer dot vsync disabled dot uh, dot vsync disabled and that will disable our vsync allowing us to actually uh well continue on and finally we want to get our viewport um which will be the main camera and then we want to say make sure it is going to use xr and set that to true we also just want an else statement here to print if there is any error. So we can just say um, open XR not initialized. Um, please check if your headset is connected. The main issue for if this doesn't find anything will be if you haven't got your VR connected to your headset. And that is all we really need to get started in here. However, I'm going to do something. So we go back to 3D here. Or oh, sorry. Well, we do know X origin. But you can see we have no hand yet. Our hands are going to be invisible, meaning we will not see them move. So what we want to do is using the add-ons, there is a um, basically some built-in hands already pre-set up to squeeze and, you know, all that. 
in here. So I'm going to do control shift A to instantiate a child. And we're going to search for low poly because there is a high poly version for obviously if you're using, um, if you're going to be using forward plus and doing PC for you, you can use the high poly. Probably still recommend the low poly because, you know, performance. And what we're going to do is on the left hand, we're going to add in the left hand. And there's a different, loads of different version. There's even physics hands, which we can get into at a later date. Uh, but we are going to use the left full glove low. And as you can see, it's just a nice yellow hand. You can change this material if you want to, um, but I like to keep this just because it's quite bright for testing. Maybe later on we can add in a custom hand as well. And there you go, we've got our left hand. We then want to do the same. So control, so control, shift, and A, and we can go low poly right and then here you can see right full glove low and add that in there and these should be set up to work straight away you can see on the right default pose you can actually change this if you wanted to to change what they look like when you're just not doing anything with the controllers essentially um and there you go so let's go back to our main scene now you can see our hands just barely coming through the floor there um, and there you go. Now we need to actually connect up our headsets. I'm going to open the Oculus app again. You can connect yours however you want. Um, and I'm just going to get my headset. Um, and when the Oculus app is open, it is now open. It's on a different screen. Don't need to, to be in your face. I'm just going to connect this up using AirLink, and then I can hit play, and we should see that we can move or look around in VR. There we go. But I'm going to launch the Oculus XR here. Okay, guys, so now I am actually in it, and I can actually hit play. So I'm in VR actually hitting play here, and you'll see on screen that you can see a small thing, and I am here, but it's completely pitch black because we haven't added any lights to our scene. So let me just go and add some lights real quick. So in here, we can actually just add in, select these three dots, and just add sun, add environment to the scene, and then that way we actually have our scene. Yeah, so it's saying here we don't can't actually use shadow, so we should probably just shadow, turn those off, and that'll fix that error, because shadows don't actually work in compatible mode. Um, you can bake shadows, but obviously real-time shadows will not work. Actually, I don't know if you can bake them in compatibility. Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. I haven't tried. Anyway, let's actually hit play again and put our headset on. And this time, you can see it's in your hands now. I know it's only a small screen for you. I should probably full screen it. Please hold caller. Now, where is my mouse? This probably looks hilarious on screen. There you go. Now, you can see here we have our hands. We can look around. And that is all it takes to actually set up our first VR scene in the game. Now, we can go in ahead here and add some blocks we can pick up. We can add in the ability to walk around or teleport or do a bunch, a range of different things, even hold a gun and shoot a gun, um, which is pretty cool. So you can see here it is looking pretty cool. The gloves are working. Um, and, yeah, that is how... We build VR inside of Godot. It's so easy. Honestly, it's just the first setup. I think the most confusing part is the um, script to the, for the first, uh, for this. Um, but you can actually find, I'll leave a link down below where you can actually find the tutorial on how to just set up VR anyway. Um, so, and it has this code you can copy and paste on that anyway. Um, I'll actually show you it here. You can see here, it's all here. Um, let's use a C sharp variant if you want to change to C sharp. And there you go. You can see all of it in here as well as all of the extra parts. So that is going to be it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, do not forget to leave a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Also, don't forget to let me know down below what you want to see in the next uh, videos for this series and also don't forget to join the discord server and go to the patreon where you can get the assets or oh, sorry not the assets the the startup template i've just made here inside of um my patreon and it will also help to support the channel so that's going to be it for this one i'll see you in the next one peace out